David Smith here with another Flip Classroom Math video. A few tips before we get started. Remember you can always pause the video if you need to catch up with your notes. You can also speed up or slow down the playback if that helps. Finally, you can turn on the captions so you can see my words going by at the bottom of your screen. Today's topic, subsets and complements. And these two ideas will further refine our work comparing different sets and seeing what's going on with that. So let's take a look here. Subsets, pretty straightforward definition. If all elements in one set, for example, set A, are also in a second set, for example, set B, then A is a subset of B, okay? So for example, if set A is boys at Verde Valley School, and set B is all students at Verde Valley School, then A is a subset of B, okay? Because all the boys are in the larger set that includes boys and girls, okay? So we have notation for that. We write A is a subset of B. This is like that little, this little C with a line below. It's kind of a strange symbol, but that's how we do that. So this means A is a subset of B. So let's do an example with some numbers so you can see that more mathematically. Here's a set, we're calling this A, and it's got the three numbers in it, two, three, and nine. Set B has more numbers. It's got two, three, six, seven, nine, and 11. But you probably noticed already that all three of these numbers, two, three, and nine, two, three, and nine, are also in set B. So A is a subset of B. Okay, let's take a look at the complement of sets. Now this idea takes a little bit longer to build, it's a little bit more complicated, but once we start doing examples, I think it'll come together and make sense. So, complements. The first thing we need to do is talk about this thing called the universal set. And this is a little confusing. It sounds a little bit like if it's the universal set, it should be the same everywhere. And that's not true. The universal set is defined for each question that you might receive in the exercises. So I've put two different universal sets here just to play around with these definitions so you can see what that might look like. So in this case, we're defining the universal set as the set of all x such that x is bigger than 7 and x is a member or an element of the positive integers. Remember, z stands for integers. And when we put that little plus out there, that means we only want the positive integers. So this universal set, all x such that x is greater than 7 and is an element of the positive integers. So we could write this like this. Greater than 7 means we would start with 8, 9, 10, like that. Okay, so that would be that set. Here's another way to define the universal set. The set of all x such that x is less than or equal to 9, and x is an element of the real numbers. Okay, so remember, real numbers are every number that can be shown on a number line. Okay, so all the real numbers that are less than or equal to 9. So this one would be better shown with a number line. Got 9, 10, 11, 12. So I could show that with a number line. Notice how I made my number line very simple. I just showed what I needed. I showed my positive 9. I showed that we're going in the negative direction, past zero, and then I shaded it really heavily. I put a solid dot by the nine because it can be equal to nine, okay? So, to put this in context, all we've done here is we've just talked about this idea of the universal set, and then we've defined two different universal sets. So, in the exercises, you'll get a definition like this, and then you'll get some questions about building complements, which we haven't actually talked about yet. All right, let's define the complement of a set. Okay, and then we'll do some examples that should all come together. So, the complement, A prime, that means the complement of set A. So, A prime, 
is the set of all x such that x is not an element of a. So whatever is in set a, a prime's elements, the members of a prime, are not in a, but they are in whatever universal set has been defined for the problem. Okay? So this is a little tricky. Again, a prime. It's all x such that x is not in A, so that's the other set, but x is in the universal set, okay? So we have some universal set with a bunch of stuff in it. Then we've defined a subset of that universal set with a few less things in it. A prime is all the other things in the universal set that aren't in A. Okay, now let's get into it and find some complements of some sets. So complements. So to do that, we need a universal set to look at. So this universal set is a set of all x such that x is less than or equal to 12 and x is a member of the positive integers. Okay? So if set A is the even numbers in this universal set, then a prime, which is the complement of a, would just have to be the odd numbers in u. Okay? So these are all the numbers that are not in this set. So complements contain all the numbers that aren't in the regular set that they are a complement of. So I can enumerate those numbers. These are 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, and 11. These are all the positive integers less than 12 that aren't in the even numbers, which are the odds, okay? So in this case, a and a prime are complements. So now to test yourself, I want you to do the next one here. Set b is the prime numbers in u, okay? So go ahead and pause the video and see if you can write out what is in b prime. Okay, so if you struggle with that a little bit, Maybe one step that would help is, let's show what this set is. So B is the prime numbers in U. Now remember, 1 is no longer considered prime. So we're going to start with 2, 3, 4 is not prime, 5, 6 is not, 7, 8 is not, 9 is not, 10 is not, 11 is prime. So. Set B, which is the prime numbers in U. Remember, these are the positive integers less than 12. So set B is 2, 3, 5, 7, and 11. Okay? So that's what B is. So B prime, the first thing we can do is we could write non prime in U. Right? Just like we wrote odd numbers in U. So this is the non-primes, whoops, I didn't write that, okay. This would be non-primes in U. And what that is, it's just all the members of U that aren't these guys. So we've got one, two, three is there, four is good, six is good, eight is good, nine, ten. And since this is less than or equal to twelve, 12 is also one of our numbers. Now that you've watched the video, take a moment and write down any questions that you might have so you can bring them to our next class. Remember that you can always watch the video again and perfect your notes. Finally, if you enjoyed the video, please click the like button down below. And if you'd like to help me grow my YouTube channel, please click subscribe.